Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. For us and for our salvation. God did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us. Will God not also give us everything else with Christ? Blessed be the name of the Lord. We welcome, we come to the foot of your cross and bow with the disciples, Lord Jesus. We ponder the mystery of your life and death. We proclaim the truth of who you are with those who witnessed your love poured out for us. We come to you this day because you first came to us. We come to show our love for you because you first loved us. We come to serve you because you first served us. And we come to worship you with God, the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and always. God of loving kindness, you sent Christ into the world that we might have life and have it abundantly. Yet we live lives that are sometimes deadly. Certainly is intent. We allow your world to be filled with violence and terror. Our trust in you is shallow and our faithlessness falters. In the face of uncertainty and trouble, we forget that your loving kindness governs all things. Forgive who we have been, amend who we are, and direct who we shall be through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, no. 
Would you join me in our prayer for understanding? Source of wisdom and understanding, in the midst of our distractions, let us experience stillness. In the midst of competing voices, let us hear your word. In the many choices we face, let us follow your will. In the, in the name, name of Jesus, Jesus our, our teacher and savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. The betrayal of Jesus. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kindron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then, Jesus, knowing all that was about to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. And then Jesus said to them, I am he, and stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said, I told you, I am he. So if you're looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word, word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. Peter said to, sorry, Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? Would you bow your heads in prayer? Creator, as we start this path with Jesus, give us a moment to reflect within and around us. Allow us to make sense of those moments of what was, is, and is to become. Guide us as we go together with you and others on this passion story that we tell every Good Friday let us be reminded that without darkness, we cannot see the light. That without the seed, a tree will not grow. Give us the strength to overcome. And as we reflect on the betrayal of Jesus, we reflect on the betrayal we may have lived through in our lives as well. We pause and take time to remember to search, to breathe, and then to let it go. Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? Give us the ability to let go as Jesus has asked us to. Amen. Jesus before the high priest. So the soldiers, their officers, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First, they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Let us pray. My God, there are many judgments amongst humankind. Many times we would rather than stop, pause, and reflect on what we believe is the truth. Today, God, grant us the blessing of patience and resolve not only to speak our truth, but also to live it and look upon others in the same blessed way. 
Let us live in wisdom so that no one would have to die for our truth, but instead will live for our love. Amen. Peter denies Jesus. Simon Peter and the other disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? And Peter said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it, warming themselves. Peter was also standing around it, warming himself. Let us pray. Holy One, there have been times in our lives when we've neglected knowing you. We've had our moments when we may feel embarrassed, nervous, or shameful to speak of who we truly are as individuals, families, friends, communities. We've gotten scared to speak of who you created us to be. Forgive us. Give us the courage to stand up, to be what is right in this world, so that others can live in a world of safety. Let us support one another in good ways and speak with gratitude and honesty. Amen. The High Priest Questions Jesus. Then the high priest questioning Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. And Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I've said to them. They will know what I've said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? And Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongfully, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Would you bow your heads in prayer? God, give us the hearts to listen. Grant us the words to tell others of what is true. Settle the anger and the hurt and the sorrow that we have in our hearts. Release the goodness that you created in us and others 
in order to create the peace that is needed in this time of judgment. Our truths are not wrong, but are a lesson to what you've asked to be, a path to your love. Thank you. Amen. Peter denies Jesus again. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself, and they asked him, you are not also one of his disciples, are you? And he denied it again, saying, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, did I not see you last night? in the garden with him, and again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. Would you bow your heads in prayer? Great Spirit, there are times when we deny ourselves the truth. As Peter in the Passion story denies his relationship with Jesus, we too have denied at times in our lives, our relationship with you. Forgive us. Simply forgive us for denying this relationship with the Spirit. We are your children. We're learning. And we will grow from our mistakes, from our shame, and from our lack of confidence to be the loving creatures that you've made us to be. Give us courage, great Spirit. Let this blessing rain upon us all. Amen. Jesus before Pilate. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? And they answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. And Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. And the Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoning Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others put you up to it? Jesus replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. And Pilate asked him, So you're a king? And Jesus said, 
You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. And Pilate asked, what is truth? Let us pray. Creator of heaven and earth, we come to you today asking, what is truth? As we travel forward in this time of our lives, we observe many changes and actions of others that we may not always agree with. Allow us to see the truth and the changes in our world and to act in ways that are for the well-being of those experiencing these changes. This may give us the answer to the truth we seek in our lives. It may also bring us to peace with the changes in the world we live. Let your truth, creator, be our hope. Amen. Jesus sentenced to death. After Pilate had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him. But you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? And they shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. So then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said, Look. I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, 
Crucify him. Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, because I find no case against him. And the Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered the headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? And Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? And Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who's handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, here is your king. And they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. And Pilate asked, shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests answered, we have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to be crucified. Let us pray. Loving God, many times we cry over the injustices of the world. We get discouraged and frustrated from the harms we see amongst us and around us. And in many instances, we too are guilty of these injustices, sometimes without even realizing it. Calm our spirits from these patterns of behavior and give us a renewed thought and observation of these injustices. Place in our hands a new gift of life, a way of forgiveness, understanding, and loving creation. Allow us to be the encouragement and peace during times of harm and hate. And together with our siblings in the spirit, we can be a path to loving one another, the commandment that Jesus left us. In loving companionship, amen.
the crucifixion of Jesus. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross, and it read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews. But this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top, so they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots to see who gets it. And this was to fulfill what the scripture said. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross were, were his mother and his sister's mother, Mary and the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. And he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After, Jesus, after this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So the soldiers put a sponge full of the wine on a branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Would you bow your heads? Great mystery. Hear our prayers from our hearts and minds in silence as we reflect on the crucifixion of Jesus. Allow the Holy Spirit to enter my temple as I remember the journey Jesus Christ has taken. Let this be a moment for you, great mystery, to guide us to what we need to receive in our lives so that we may understand a little more of our paths and your creation. It is finished. Amen.
Jesus' side was pierced. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was the day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they've pierced. Let us pray. Dear God, let your miracle live through us as passionate people of your word. You have given us great wisdom and understanding to be miracles in this world. We are witnesses of the cross. We are witnesses of the truth. We are the miracle that will go forward and help the world during this time of sorrow, in its time of need and time of change. Bless us with the will to be better people, people that have vision, the ability, the knowledge, the understanding, and the breath to continue this great journey of life. Through the harshness and through the triumphs, we will be the commandment of Jesus. We will be the will and the love, the promise to your world. In Jesus' name, amen. The Burial of Jesus. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed the body. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there.
The story's been told. And now we return to the world where we live and wait. The worship is no, the worship continues while we wait and watch. Our worship will close after the stone has been removed and the flame of hope has been relit. So when we go out too late, we watch for hope that defies despair, the light that defies death, the beginning that defies the end. And while we wait, while darkness covers the land of faith, remember that no matter how abandoned we might feel, we are not alone. God has not and will not abandon us. Thanks be to God. Amen.